mentorship a must by alumni of public schools. As the years go by, we see a general decline in the quality of education in Nigeria. It is also worrying that there is a decline in our value system. Corruption and all sorts of immoral acts have always been a thing by a quiet minority. At a period, a young man who takes a new car to his father in the village must first declare his source of income before he gets the requisite blessings. Financial success was no success without integrity, diligence, and honesty. Many young people are now aspiring to be rich at any price. 419 used to be the preserve of mature, dubious men who knew they were committing crimes. But children barely out of their diapers engage in yahoo yahoo and have used all sorts of illogical reasons to justify defrauding helpless people of their rightful possessions. My friend taught in the public school system in Lagos State. He gave insight into the psyche of several students in the schools. Many public secondary school students have affiliation to cult groups now. He believed that many of these children had lost their ways before their teens. They are the hope of tomorrow, only before the clock 10. The alumni of my secondary school, FGC Odubolu, has repeatedly given back to the school in the last few years. We have built, painted, donated, bought, name it. That has been the story year after year. There was a year that a group executed a solar lighting system project so that, the, so that the students would have lighting in their dormitory under any circumstance. It was a gesture that would have given them what many Nigerians lack. Light all night long. Alas, the students vandalized the switches and fittings before commissioning. That was a cry for help. Several young people need help to, to think a right. I came across an initiative of the old students of FGC Enugu. The organizers recruited alumni willing to be mentors and got 50 volunteers. Each alumnus got two mentees, a day student and a brother. They were matched according to gender and as much as possible by the career path of the students. There must be rules of engagement. So a teacher and an alumnus explain to the undress students the benefits of having a mentor and the expectations. For instance, the students were never to request financial aid. They were encouraged to be actively engaged and passionate. One of the results is that 30% of the enrollees still communicate with their mentors years after leaving secondary school. They have remained sounding boards and guiding lights. The mentors have helped some of them to get scholarship to study in universities out of Nigeria. The alumni, the alumni Association of Public Secondary Schools in Nigeria have been aggregating and using their financial resources to mitigate infrastructural de decay in their former schools. This ought to be the primary responsibility of the school's owners. But a better contribution from the alumni will be to become active role models and create mentorship systems that would handhold the youths on their path to success, Nigeria would be great again. Wow. Your script just, um, it for me, it just speaks to the, the loss of uh, the value system. And um, it's quite unfortunate that today you are only relevant to the extent of how much or how well you are picking up the bills. And um, it gives me a sense of concern. Even for some of us who are still young professionals trying to um, do the time to build ourselves to the position we aspire for ourselves, most times we come off as funny. Because you see some persons who have taken the fast lane, um, making the money, and then if you're not careful, you, 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 if you're not strong enough in terms of your, 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 your sense of character, you may, you, may, you, may, you may tow that part. And of course, it has to go back to the educational institution where students, students are nurtured, how they emerge from this, um, this school system. And um, what you talked about, the need for schools 
alumni of schools to set up this mentorship program for students is really very, very, very uh, uh, important. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pick it home and recommend the same for uh, my, uh, my alma mater. You understand? Certainly. Because, because if, I knew what I, if I knew what I know now 10 years ago, True. if True. I had the opportunity or the privilege of mentors, who would have advised me? My parents were not people who went to school. You, have, you understand? So imagine if I had opportunity of having mentors who directed my path, asked me the rule, asked me the right question. Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? I feel I, I would have even gotten even further, further than I am today. Quicker. So we cannot overestimate the importance of mentorship. Let me just round up with this. A few days ago, someone, uh, Prof. Kinsley Mohalu, tweeted that. He, he just, someone just called him, one of his mentees years ago just called him to tell him that he had attained a new position in his organization. And he was thanking him for his mentorship many years ago. So that just helps to put in clear context the importance of mentorship, particularly for young persons who are still coming up. And I think for children from disadvantaged backgrounds, what it does is that it helps them to stay above their present mm. state their, or their present financial lack. Because sometimes yeah. when you are in that situation where there's, there's a lot of lack, yeah. you don't want to focus on morals. You just want to get by from day to day. And of course, it becomes easy for peer pressure to set in, mm -hmm. for vices to set in, for you to be completely distracted. Yeah. So when you, when you have a mentor and you can keep your eyes on the ball yeah. and you're looking up and saying, okay, this is attainable. Then when people come and distract you with, oh, come, let's go join a gang, mm. come, let's go vandalize, mm. you can actually um, set your eyes on the ball and stay focused regardless of your present mm. circumstances. Exactly. Exactly. You know? exactly. But it's quite unfortunate that poverty is prevalent in our society because to a large extent it contributes to um, the true, situation whereby true, students true. Um, join gangs mm. or the get-rich-quick attitude. Yeah. And that's what I tell people, that you tell people to invest in picture storybooks that are beautiful. Something beautiful and quality costs money. Yeah. But here comes a father that is worried about feeding his children. He's not worried about buying school fee, paying yeah. school fees. Yeah. And the last one on his mind is um, buying the picture storybook. It still comes to that poverty mentality. Yeah. Because they, they, they don't have food on their table. They don't have a roof over their heads. Then somebody is coming to tell them, you know, how <laughs> to be mentor. upright. Uh, there's, there's a lot to be, to be done about the root cause of the yeah, you know, vices. Yeah, and and you, it ties down to a lot of the things we've talked about earlier, about the, that shows you the importance of um, mentorship. Because at the end of the day, if you want a young man to respect the body of a woman, he needs to have been taught yeah. to do that. that a woman's body is... Yeah, a, because comfort actually mentioned that too. An object too. of exploitation. Yeah, yes. it, it, it's, it's sacred. You know, just like comfort, Adelia said. Yeah. It's a right? cultural comfort. issue. Comfort? <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. Yo, yo, I'm, um, uh, we're actually highlighting mentorship and um, g gender e effect on it. Um, yes, um, some, um, I think Mr. Raymond mentioned the issue of the value system, and the value system is from the home. And let's be honest, I mean, I'm not, I'm not making any gender um, issues here, but let's be honest, the person who, who holds that um, baton in the home is the female, again. And we, we are raising young men, young women. How are we raising them? And it on this further underscores this issue of community involvement in bringing up children. So at the family level, you know, they say, you know, it, it takes a community to bring up a child. The child moves out of, you know, your protection into the larger world. In the larger world, there's supposed to now be this community, which we're now going to call the mentors, who are supposed to be able to make themselves available um, to help people who are vulnerable, children or growing young adults who are vulnerable and, um, who need to know which way to go in life. And so two things here. Um, those of us that have had the privilege and have been you know, lucky enough to be where we are, we too now need to consciously seek out opportunities where we can 
lend our time. I'm on a program called Narrative 4, and that's what they do. They just go around looking for people who are willing. You know, would you like to be what they call a big sister? And they pick children from public schools, interestingly, and they pair you. Yes, they pick us from, and, and I was involved in one. It was an enriching experience. It was, I mean, in the beginning, it was awkward, you know, because, you know, you come from a certain background and you see and you wonder what you've taken for granted. These people are lapping it up. And so it's a, it's a, beautiful topic but there's and there's the need these children are under pressure everything i mean it was heartbreaking you know to talk to some of them at all but there are platforms out there i think that are coming out and realizing that mentorship is key as Ms. raymond said also if i had a mentor even just five years ago not ten I would be five years further on in my own life now. Talk more of the, you know, talk more of these kids that are in a society that is ravaged by insecurity, as you said, the poverty, the get rich quick schemes, um, in social media pushing forward the, you know, falsehood and buying into it. Um, so um, kudos, and I, I hope um, we get the opportunity to work more on um, being mentors, not just around our schools, but even in our own, you know, communities. Exactly. exactly. I think I was going to uh, advocate that. I think there is a role for uh, religious institutions uh, in this space, in this connection, because a um, few days ago, I think it was deputy governor of Lagos at a function in honor of Latif Jaconde, the former, the late former governor of Lagos State, and he said that people not listening to their pastors. They listen to the imams more than more they listen than. to the government. Sure. You understand? So there is this, there is this, there is a great role for tradition, uh, for religious institutions to play in this way. These pastors, imams, and all of that. Children, our uh, parents should be able to volunteer to take their children to some of these okay. to for mentorship um, opportunities. Okay, so, and there's a, and also within their system, they can they can set up mentorship program and encourage parents to bring their children to take the benefits. They could assign mentors. Okay. To these children, and just like Comfort said, um, we can we can uh, take it off from there. Okay, so, so I beg to differ on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I will hear your, I will hear your differing opinion. I, I completely beg to differ on this one. Look, religion has caused us enough harm at this oh, point. Yeah. Until the religious institutions get their act together, know exactly why. God allowed uh, the, the um, traditional God called them to be, they are going to cause you more problem. What they're teaching people more is about the uh, tangibles of life, how to get visa, how to get wife, how to oh. um, buy new uh, car, how to whatever. What, what we need is the enrichment of the spirit, the, the soul of people. You know, people. If people learn to be kinder, to be more honest, that is what they're supposed to teach. That's not what they're teaching. So for me at this point, I, Oh, I'm sorry. Leave religion okay. out. It's Let okay. Them... Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Sorry. Sorry. It's that's, okay. That's, that's really, really awesome. <laughs> you know, the thing about the advocate is that time is never our friend on this program. However, advo the advocacy continues on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV, Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa hashtag the advocate ng to catch up with previous broadcasts go to plus TV Africa.com forward slash the advocate ng don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel plus TV Africa till next week same time on this station remember that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a sinner society Bye for now. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it, it does, it does, it does. I don't know what we can do 
if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.